Hi, I'm Sarah Matheny. I am the creator of the blog Peas and Thank You and the new cookbook Peas and Thank You, Simple Meatless Meals the Whole Family Will Love. And today I'm going to show you on everydaydish.tv how to make some pumpkin spice bars. Today we're going to do a gluten-free version. So we're going to start with some oat flour. I've ground this myself using gluten-free oats. If you want it to be gluten-free, you have to make sure they're the certified gluten-free oats. I'm going to add some all-purpose gluten-free flour. This is Bob's Red Mill, but you may have another brand you like better, or you can make your own. But for convenience here, I've just bought a packaged um, gluten-free flour. I've got some xanthan gum, which is a wonderful binding agent to use in gluten-free baked goods. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And since we're not using um, eggs or dairy, we've got some specific amounts of baking powder and baking soda to use as a leavening here. So I'm adding the baking soda and a little bit more baking powder. And now we've got some spices and these add all the flavor to our bars. So we've just got some ginger, some freshly ground nutmeg. I love to grind my own. It's especially fragrant and delicious. Some cinnamon, a little bit of salt for a little contrast in there with the sweet. I love that. And then this is garam masala. This is an Indian spice. It has a little black pepper, a little heat in it, and this kind of sets your bars apart so they're not your average um, pumpkin bars. But you can find that um, pretty much in any supermarket. So we're just gonna mix these dry ingredients together, and then we're gonna do our wet over here. I like to do my wet ingredients separately so you're more not over mixing the batter and making for a tough bar. So I've just got some canned pumpkin here. You can also make your own, but that seems like a lot of work, so I just use the canned. And then I've got some brown sugar and some organic sugar. I buy the organic just to make sure that it's vegan. And then a little vanilla and canola oil. If you're really concerned about fat, you could substitute applesauce if you want, but a little canola oil isn't going to hurt anybody. And then I've got some non-dairy milk. This is almond milk, but you could use soy as well, or rice, or whatever you like. And we're just going to whisk these together really quickly. You could also do this in an electric, electric mixer if you want to make things um, a little bit easier on yourself, but I like a little upper body workout in with my baking. Kind of evens out the treats that I'm going to eat. So once that's all combined, we're just going to stir our wet ingredients into our dry. This is the point where if my kids are helping me, I don't let them help me after this because <laughs> they tend to over mix things. But I let them go to town when they're mixing the dry ingredients or the wet ingredients. But once they're added together, you really have to be careful not to over mix so your things don't get tough. So we're just gonna fold this until it's completely incorporated. Like I said, as little mixing as possible, but you still don't want lumps in your batter. So just get it all nice and combined. And then once you've got it all mixed together, we've got an eight by eight baking pan. I've already preheated the oven to 350. And we're just gonna spread this down into this pan. I've greased it already. Um, you can use cooking spray or a little oil, whatever works best for you. And we're just going to spread this evenly in the pan. Once we've got it all in there, spread it out to the corners, bake it at 350. And it's going to be for about 28 to 30 minutes. You want it to be set, but you also want it to be baked all the way through. And then when that's done baking, we're going to mix up a nice frosting for it. Okay, so our cake's been baking for about 30 minutes, and we're going to check and see if they're done. You might have to adjust the baking time depending on your oven temperature and which exact flours you're using. But you just want to take a skewer, stick it in the middle, and make sure it comes out clean. And it does. So let it cool for about 30 minutes before we frost it, and we'll come back and frost it in just a second. So now we're going to make our non-dairy cream cheese icing. I've just got my mixer here, some powdered sugar, get a little powdered sugar smoke going there, 
got some non-dairy cream cheese. You can find this at Whole Foods. Uh, Trader Joe's now has their own brand. It's just next to the regular cream cheeses. And then I've got some vegan margarine. This is Earth Balance. If soy is an issue for you, you could try getting the soy free. And then we've got a half teaspoon of vanilla. And we're just gonna mix this all together till it gets nice and creamy. A lot of people kind of freak out at this point and think that there's not enough liquid in it, but actually the earth balance and the cream cheese get really uh, softer when you whip them. So you don't wanna add any liquid or your frosting's gonna get way too thin. Turn up just a little bit. You also don't want to over whip it because then it will also get too thin. There's a few lumps in there, so if it's really a concern that you have creamy, creamy, smooth, smooth icing, you can sift your powdered sugar. But I didn't because it all tastes the same. So we've got our uh, pumpkin bars over here that have cooled for 30 minutes. And we're just going to scoop our frosting on top. I love the creamy, delicious frosting with the spicy bars. It's delicious, and these are great um, for the holidays, too. So we're just going to spread it around. Make sure everybody gets the same amount of frosting. We don't want any jealous kids on our hands. And then you're just going to cut it into bars and serve it. And I like to keep the leftovers in the fridge so that the frosting stays nice and, and firm and you can even pack them in a lunch the next day. So I hope you try making these delicious pumpkin spice bars and thank you for joining us today.